Hey everyone! Today we're going to be uploading a new video with a better quality. We got some concerns regarding our last sharp scan to folder that the quality was not the best. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and redo the sharp scan to folder uh, video for everyone. I'm hoping uh, the quality is going to be better, sound is going to be good, and everything is going to be fine. The steps from our last video to this video really not that different. Um, um, the main thing you guys need to know before we get started is you're definitely going to need to know the IP address of the Sharp MFP that we're going to be working on. So um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to walk you through the steps to get this done. It's going to be a two-part process. First part is we're actually going to be creating a folder, a destination folder that we're going to uh, want our scan documents to go into, and then the second part of uh, the second part of the process would be creating an address book entry on the Sharp MFP itself. Uh, so step one, we're going to go ahead and create a shared folder, and we're going to go ahead and assign permissions. Generally speaking, what I like to do is I like to keep everything uh, super duper simple just so I don't have uh, trouble with file paths and stuff like that. So usually what I'll do is, unless we have a special request or something like that, usually what I'll do is uh, go ahead and just create a new folder directly in the C drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a uh, folder and we're going to go to the C drive. Once that's opened up, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to go new, and we're going to go folder. Once a folder is created, you're going to want to give it some sort of friendly name, some sort of name that's easy uh, to remember. What I suggest with the folder naming scheme, don't use special characters uh, or spaces. Um, just um, because in the past I have had issues uh, with giving folders names and putting spaces. Uh, sometimes the sharps don't want to play nice uh, with these uh, type of folder names. So what I'm going to do is I usually, again, just for ease of use and simplicity, I usually just give it something usually really super duper easy to remember. So for today's folder, again, I'm just going to name it scans. And you know, you guys can name the folder whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. But again, like I said, for ease of use and for simplicity, it's always better just keep it really, really simple and really, really easy. So once I have my folder created, I'm going to go ahead and right click on my folder. And what we're going to want to do now is we're going to go down to properties. And then what we're going to do is we're going to want to share the folder out. So first tab I'm going to go to is I'm going to go to the sharing tab. I'm going to come down here to the button that says share. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to type in the everyone group. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add everyone. Since I have the everyone group added, I now need to go ahead and set the permission level of what I want this, uh, this group to be able to do. Now, the MFP does absolutely need read-write access to this folder. So really, really important that what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change this permission level to read-write. After we have the group added and we're happy with the permission level, we're going to go ahead and hit share. Now, if this folder is a secured folder and you did not want to open it up to the everyone group, if you have a specific ID created that the MFP is going to use, you can go ahead and just add that specific user as opposed to a group. Um, again, the group is everyone. This sort of opens up that folder uh, and allows everyone um, access to it in uh, one way or another. So again, if you didn't want to open up the folder to a group and you did just want uh, the MFP only scanning to the uh, folder, um, then again, you would just uh, put in that specific user and then give that specific user read write access. Once I have, again, once I, my folder is shared out, um, you can see that we got the confirmation window here. After we're done, everything looks good. We can go ahead and click done. 
and then um, we want to verify on the security tab. Uh, under the security tab, we just want to make sure that the group we added, everyone, is going to be uh, added under here as well, and it does have the full permissions to the folder. Once we're happy with that, everything's good to go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move on to the address book entry for the Sharp machine. For this part, um, what you're going to need to know absolutely is you're absolutely going to need to know the IP address of the copier that you guys are creating uh, this on. Once you know that, what you can do is you can go ahead and type the IP address of the MFP into a browser and you should be able to connect. I believe I'm on 213. And you can see I got my Sharp interface right here. I do, I do not need to be logged in as an administrator uh, to be able to create address book entries. Address book entries are opened up for all the general users. Once I'm on the page, I'm going to go ahead and come down here. We're going to go to address book. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to add. Once I'm under the address registration page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the network folder and I'm going to make sure that this is selected. After this is selected, I'm going to start from the top and start entering the information down. Address name, this is going to be a friendly name that will be listed in the copier's address book. So if it, the scanning is going to a specific user, you can go ahead and name that uh, specific user and, uh, just something to where, you know, uh, it's easy to remember and easy to pick out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go Damien and we're going to go scans. The initial field is um, not 100% super duper important. However, if you did want to put in an initial, uh, you go ahead and do this. Generally speaking, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put uh, the initials uh, something like this. Uh, what the initials do is basically when you go to the address book of the copier when you're on the machine there will be some tabbed um, pages on that address book so if you assign an initial to this name um, then it'll go ahead and appear in the tabbed pages as well. So if I went to the tab of D I would go ahead and find my uh, uh, new scan folder. After we're good with the initials, and again, the initials are not absolutely nece necessary. If this is going to be a scan folder that you're going to be using, or excuse me, if this is going to be a scan address that's going to be used a lot, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and check this box here. What this does is when you walk up to the machine and you access the address book, by default, the very first page that you see of the address book is going to be the frequent use page. Uh, so again, if you add the address to the frequent use page when the user walks up to the machine and they hit the address book, that that frequent use page is going to be uh, the first page they see and then they will see all of the scan addresses that have been assigned to that frequent use index. Not necessary, uh, but it's a nice thing to have, um, you, you know, listed on the first page. What we're going to do after we're happy with this, we're going to drop down here to the second half of the page here. Under network folder path, this is going to be listed as a new address. And then under the network folder path for required, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab some information from our scan property folder that we created. And we're going to go ahead and copy it and just drop it directly into our network folder path. You can see on the sharing page here, the sharing tab here, when I shared that folder before, after I shared it, it created a network path. So now easy, easy peasy thing I can do is just come here, copy this path, and then I can just paste it directly in, in this network folder path here. What this will do, this will take me directly to my um, uh, computer with the folder that I created called scans. 
username is going to be um, specific to the copier. So uh, depending upon who you shared this folder with, like I said, if you did not share it with everyone and you shared it with specific people, then this would be where you would put uh, that user ID credentials in uh, that you shared it to. So what I'm going to do is, um, if you did not share it to a specific user, you can always go ahead and just use the main owner of the PC, their credentials, um, for the machine to be able to log into it and be able to drop folders, uh, and excuse me, be able to drop files in the folders. So again, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using uh, my own. Um, if you are... If your computer is a member of a domain, you're going to need to put your domain name, your domain credentials in there. If the computer is not a member of the domain and it's just general, um, then you can go ahead and just uh, type in your username and password. My domain is called I2K Corp. I'm going to go ahead and put in my username for my computer. After I type in my username, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to check this box called change password and then I'm going to go ahead and enter my password after we're good with this um, we have a file type this is going to be the default file type that is assigned to this address book entry as long as PDF is okay you can leave it but if you did need a different default file type to be there then you can go ahead and select it you will still have the opportunity at the time of walk up to be able to change it to whatever you want but this just sort of sets the default compression mode and color grayscale those are basic settings that really probably will never have to change so I wouldn't worry too much about these after, we're, after uh, we're happy with these settings, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the box called Set as Default Use. We're going to check that. And then after that is all set, we can go ahead and select Add This Address. You can see that my success was requested successfully processed which means my address book entry has been created so now if I go back to my address book I'm going to see that my address book is created here with my scanner address and it has all my settings so everything we put in before that's basically it.